Our scope is here to understand where do channels begin and delineate the river networks. Here are the story by Luis Borges about the map that cover a, a, a region, a complete region, and if you like it, you can read later now. Uh, we are not there yet with our things because uh, we want to separate the river network pixel from the little slope pixel of which we have more or less a naive idea but we want to characterize more um, more quantitatively uh, the basis of uh, the extraction of river networks uh, is the use of the concept that we are already we have already introduced and uh, in particular, we have three main methods to, uh, to get the, the uh, network extract. One is putting a threshold on contributi contributing area. Let's say uh, that we will see in a while what it is. A threshold on the shear stress or using curvatures. And the scope of this talk is just to understand how these three methods work. So assume that the, uh, we have just delineated the, all the drainage directions in, in, in a certain DEM. There is an error in this figure here, and you, you have to try to find it. It's not so difficult. But anyway, any point is drained, and we have all the drainage directions. Uh, one idea is, for instance, that for some reason we can say that the the river network exists where um, we have more uh, contributing area more than, for instance, three pixels. Then if it is the case, for instance, in this thing, the river network is the one that is a sign with a blue thick line, and the other one is just hill slopes. So we have hill slopes and riparian areas. Uh, draw like this one. In a real landscape, uh, choosing a, tre a threshold uh, gives results like this one. Here you see this is a, actually an old map where we have a contour line, so we see that the network goes uh, in a certain characteristic of the contour lines, even it, it, it is not always so clear what uh, what happened, but you can see that sometimes the contour line goes around the network, so you have a deep valley there with erosion, and maybe we will go back later uh, on this type of things. But why 200 grid cell and all other numbers? For instance, in this case, uh, we choose 30, 100, 500, and 1000 pixel as area threshold. And as you see, the network is changing a lot, especially from the first on top and the, and the second on top. The network is still... You can maybe understand those, or think that the two on top are too much... The, the, the drainage is too much dense, it's not uh, realistic as we are used to see uh, rivers and maybe you can see that uh, the 500 and 1000 are more uh, natural uh, si signature for river networks. Actually the fact that from, from 500 and, and 1000 nothing in, nothing is, cha is, is changing a little is saying something about the structure of the aggregation of areas and uh, so maybe uh, a threshold around 500 can be a reasonable assumption for this. In this case, we can, uh, we can for instance, see that uh, this is the 500 thing. You, you can see maybe some um, uh, features that is not so, um, so similar to what you th we think is a real river network. But if we think that a real river network is just a concept, because uh, 
for sure networks are expanding during, during the large storms and we want just to fix the network for having um, a roof out there uh, what, what it is is average then we can be satisfied with this one a way to compare would be to go on the field doing a survey and where every channel begins but obviously this is a, a, a real time was wasting work and uh, another another idea could be that we take a, sat a very um, resolved satellite image and we compare the satellite image where we can recognize that there is the incision of the river and say if if the, this uh, area of 500 for instance in this case is correct or not but there is entirely a lot of things to do in the in this case but where actually do channels begin uh, in soil mantle landscape as montgomery and dietrich um, demonstrated in, in in their famous work on 1989 the channel head is something like the one you see in this figure where we have you see that you have a grass around and then you have an excavation with obviously a, a contour line that change maybe of direction and then you have the head of the channels it is obvious that this head of channels is migrating during storm going uphill mm -hmm and maybe feeling during interstorm, interstorm period due to diffusion processes that move the sediment inside and fill, fill the, the eroded part again. But this is a channel head and you can appreciate the dimension which is a very small, um, approximately half a meter. So a channel at the beginning are very small erosion mean, means that the some shear stress is acting through the water action you have maybe an, an idealized uh, drawing of uh, what is going on of the landscape that montgomery and dietrich analyzed you have water maybe water uh, flowing inside the hill slope at a certain moment the amount of water is uh, such that the it is acting a shear stress on the on the soil and this is uh, destabilizing the soil and the soil is eroding and going away and uh, down there you, we have an eroded bed which occasionally is filled by water another view of the same catchment can be the, this one where we see the hills up on top and then we have the head um, the head and and then the excavation out of it of it in during the storm oh, we have a discharge that we call q and um, the perimeter of the of the section here is called b so we have essentially the a, a discharge q going through a perimeter of length b and the, the stress is made by water along the perimeter so can we put this in some formulas uh, the main idea here is uh, in literature in particular in the uh, seminal work by montgomery and dietrich is that um, the the stress generated by water can be uh, approximated by using some um, poorly geom geometrical or geomorphic indicators like the uh, contributing area and the, and, and the contour perimeter B that we were uh, drawing here. So uh, in particular the stress uh, is proportional to the co total contributing area uh, divided by the contour length B. The total contributing area here, here is a, just a surrogate of discharge in the previous figure. We don't know 
fig um, we don't know discharge here but we we do know the contributing area because we know how to calculate it uh, through uh, through a DEM with the appropriate software and then certainly the shear stress is proportional to the slope the slope that we already defined before and the slope here can be seen either as the the modulus of the gradient of the surface or the tangent of the slope angle theta z another representation of this process is this this one due to David Tarbotton, which actually show uh, what is going on in the real catchment. We have uh, on top uh, what we call is an head water or a catchment of order zero. If we remind what does it, it means in terms of stralar ordering, uh, there uh, water is uh, before it is spreading out, diverging and then is converging in a point all the water is converging in a point so all the water concur to increase the shear stress that we saw here because the contributing area on top is becoming uh, suddenly very large and then you have the the starting of a channel head and then you have the blue line that re represents the the river networks laterally you can see that there are uh, the contour line as uh, more or less parallel and this means that the the drainage here is not concentrating at all and not having enough enough strength to break the soil and uh, excavate a new river networks another image of the same concept is, is is this one where we have on top we have divergent flow because water is going is starting from a point and going to, to different points it is due to the fact that the top of the of the hill is uh, is like a semispheric more or less like a paraboloid where any point two points are two points very close at the beginning uh, bring to drain diff very different drainage directions but there is a sudden change in the in the landscape and the landscape start to converge actually this converge because of water is not the landscape because what the landscape is formed also by water but is the the dynamics that of the interaction between the landscape and the water moving that makes this the flow became convergent and then cr creating the stream at least during during the the during the uh, the storm laterally uh, more or less there is no erosion no concentration of flow so the flow is more or less parallel in the very first studies by Montgomery and Dietrich, they were uh, apl applying the contributing area idea that we investigated before, where they put a contributing a channel for a contributing area larger than 5,000 um, square meter, half of an hectare, and they where they use a, a threshold of on the on the shear stress where a here is the total contributing area s is the slope and b is the the the, the contour line of which we talk about uh, this way is, uh, this actually has the dimension of a, of meter and they observed that they were reproducing the more or less the real landscape with a, a value of 25 uh, they also uh, draw there the USGS blue lines, where the blue, so-called blue lines, are the 
place where the maps uh, available at that time were um, saying that there was a channel. Well, you know, the channels, the blue lines, uh, were drawn by geographers who were drawing the maps and uh, more or less by experience more than with an objective idea where to channel begin. I already mentioned that uh, even in this case where we go to look for the shear stress there are um, things connected with the uh, with the curvatures. Um, in fact you you have here three pixels one side of the other you have the the water flux and the, uh, we have the uh, draw here a strong convergence this strong convergence mean that um, the landscape here is convergent the water come out from the, uh, from the uh, from the left and goes to, uh, towards the right when it come it come in in the pixel which is in gray here more or less uh, uh, the water flux we can, we can consider a constant in this small space L of the pixel uh, go through a, a length which is uh, which is more or less uh, the side of of the pixel um, however due to the convergence due to the curvatures that we talk about in, in another lesson uh, water is converging and converging to a much smaller portion of the pixel. We can actually evaluate this convergence uh, uh, with uh, some application of the, of the differential geometrical question that we are not transforming into, into formulas right, uh, right here because we just want to explain the concept so but what when water is concentrating the shear stress stress increase and that actually you can show in a map in a in a while that the, this increasing of the shear stress is very large in some points so through this method uh, we actually can think that we can more or less objectively identify where the river network begins so in this image that uh, was produced by some of, of your former colleagues you can see the drainage area divided by draining by unit contour length by and um, this is uh, obtained by the concept that we illustrated here and you see that uh, there are points where actually the, the this value explode and consequently also the shear stress explode and this can be then a good idea to to get the channels beginning obviously the formula with the, the shear stress here um, is missing some constants in front and this constant is depending on geology and lithology present in this landscape and only maybe in another landscape so we we'll, we don't still have the full story but we can to we can build some consistency consistency here and in this case also it's not just a fixed contributing area that tells you where where the channels begin but something which at least seems more physical this is actually not always the case because in for instance in this work by Hollandini and colleagues they shows that the place where the shear stress was apparently higher uh, according to the to the idea of David Tarbotton and uh, no, sorry of um, David Montgomery and um, and Bill Dietrich is not working. They were to uh, they were he and they went in this catchment and they mapped the channel heads, which are the small um, circles, and they derived 
where they thought there were uh, some indication of the some indication of the channel initiation according to different to different criteria on top you have the contributing area and in the middle you have the the shear stress and you see actually that the contributing area is giving better results this is because probably here we have a different lithology and soil mantle is actually this is actually a place in the dolomites so it behaves maybe a little bit different so uh, whatever the method here we can look at curvatures for instance and um, whatever the method we um, uh, we had an idea of how to get the channel heads and the behavior and the extraction of the river network because once you have the channel head um, what you think is that everything downhill is channel this is actually not always true as you see here the in this map for instance there are channels that starts and then ca kind of disappear and then starts again and this is also re um, real this is real in the sense that in the uh, channels head can exist and then the, the channels can be interrupted at least from the geomorphic signature of the channel in any case we we don't go further here we will have the occasion to play with the, the tools or with the curvatures with the and say whether for instance the planar curvature is uh, is such that it is convex and concave and it goes over a threshold and then we have there a channel initiation for instance so what, what, when we have the channel network what happens when we have the channel networks uh, we are in the situation on top here where we have our catchment and we have delineated our channel network then we, uh, we can identify the links that here are identified by different colors even if some of the colors are pretty similar uh, the link a link in a channel is uh, a place between two junctions when two um, you have sources on top which are linked that are not receiving water by any other piece just from the hill slope and when they join we have a, a, a node and starts a new link and when we you have a link you can uh, look at all the, the drainage direction and all the points that drain inside each of the link so your catchment is subdivided now in hill slope a more realistic representation of this is is this one uh, where actually the position of the river network was m made by was recovered by hand to make more visible and you see here you have different color for different sub catchments actually uh, one thing that you uh, your eyes is certi certainly capturing is that the form of the hills up is not exactly the one that maybe you will be drawing by yourself if you think that uh, you have to to draw a river network or or a hill slope um, to be to be even more clear um, actually the hill slope we were drawing here were um, were more or less uh, the whole thing appear in this figure that can be actually subdivided in three you have the channel head on top which is as its own dynamics its own geomorphology and then you have the lateral flowing um, uh, flowing hill slope on 
the right side and the left side that can be quite different actually because often the streams uh, tend to follow folds and so maybe on the right on the left you have of the river you have different uh, lithological or different geological histories that make uh, uh, our discussion a little bit more and maybe even more interesting um, here we call the things a hydrologic response unit meaning that we if we have a catchment we have an area we first subdivided the subcatchment then maybe we can separate the different hill slope and uh, try to maybe searching places where more or less the hydrology can be described by a single value of a, of a rainfall or discharge or other characteristics the following fig um, figure actually says that um, this not, could be not the, the truth and sometimes uh, what we can see like a single hill slope especially if it's a head hill slope should be subdivided in more part but we will be discussing this topic later on so thank you for your attention if you have questions please let me know